let's talk about how cortisol is produced. How do we even get this substance in our body? Because understanding this is gonna help you understand the difference between Cushing syndrome and Cushing disease and why certain lab work is ordered on these patients. And it all starts with these structures here, the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal glands, and this handy dandy little feedback loop that has been installed in your body. So the very first step that we have is the person experiences some type of stress. The brain picks this up and says, oh, we got something stressful going on. We got to get our stress hormone cortisol made. So it goes through these processes to do this. Inside the brain, we have the hypothalamus. It responds and it's going to release a substance known as CRH. This is corticotropin releasing hormone. And look at this little prefix in that word right there. Hey, it looks a little like cortisol, doesn't it? So this is one of those precursors to cortisol. So whenever this substance is in the body, it's going to stimulate another structure, which is just a little bit below the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland particularly the anterior part of the pituitary gland to release its own substance known as ACTH. I want you to remember ACTH. Put it in your mind because it's one of those important labs that may be drawn on your patient. And it stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone. And again, look at the prefix of this word. It's adreno. We know it's talking about the adrenal glands. So this is the substance that's just gonna act on the adrenal glands. So once we have that, we get those adrenal glands stimulated. And once they pick that up, particularly that cortex part in there, it's going to release cortisol. So we have cortisol there to help us deal with the first step of what happened, the stress that this person is experiencing. So we have our cortisol. Typically it should be in small dose for a short period of time. The body picks that up, says, okay, we're good. We have enough cortisol. So this feedback loop sends that information up here to our hypothalamus and says, okay, so I'm going to quit my production of CRH, which in turn will cause the pituitary gland to quit its production of ACTH. And then once it's needed again, this whole system will kick back in. And normally it should work beautifully together. However, this is not always the case. Unfortunately, in this feedback loop, we can have some faulty structures. For example, the pituitary gland can have tumors that's causing it to release way too much ACTH. If we have too much ACTH, that is going to cause our adrenal glands to just pump out that cortisol. So whenever you look at blood work, you're gonna have high ACTH and high cortisol. Now that tells you it's coming from the pituitary gland and that occurs in Cushing's disease. So Cushing's disease involves typically, usually pituitary gland tumors. Now on the flip side, we could have a properly working pituitary gland, but the problem is with our adrenal glands. They have tumors that's causing it to just secrete too much cortisol, or the patient is overusing corticosteroids for a long period of time. Therefore, that is found in Cushing syndrome. And whenever that happens with lab work, typically what you're gonna see is that you're going to have high cortisol but low ACTH. And the reason for that is because the body senses, hey, we have too much cortisol in the body. So we're gonna shut these down, particularly the pituitary gland from releasing this ACTH, so it drops it. But the adrenal glands are like, I don't care. There's a tumor here causing me to release all this cortisol or this overuse of corticosteroids has caused it. So it just keeps releasing it and not really paying atten attention to this feedback loop. Okay, so that wraps up this video. If you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the description below.